Tuperos y Tuperas, today on Do By The River, we have transfer news to talk about in September. Yeah, stay tuned for that one. We're also going to recap Atlanta United. What a win on, on Saturday afternoon against Atlanta United. And, of course, we're going to preview this midweek match against the team we hate the most, I think, the New York Red Bull. And, ladies and gentlemen, do not go anywhere because you do not want to miss this episode of Do By The River. And let's get this started, guys. Eh, dale! And that is right. Welcome, everyone, to Do By The River, the show where we follow everything Philadelphia you need and brought to you by Philly Sports Network. Real quick, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say hello to YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. What has happened, everyone? Welcome on into Do By The River. It's going to be it's going to be a giant packed episode. We're we're gonna uh, we're gonna roast a couple teams that we don't like, guys. Uh, we 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 end with the team we don't like. And we're gonna end with the original team that we don't like. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Before we dive in, gentlemen, please do not forget if you're watching this live on Fox Little Phillies YouTube channel, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We are not on PSN tonight. Shouts to Flipping the Birds. They're having a great interview today. Uh, if you guys are Eagles fans, you know about the dog mentality. Uh, they are interviewing the gentleman who designed those T-shirts, so it's definitely a good, dope one. And you can check out Flipping the Birds, and you can check out Duke by the River, where every stream podcast, it's all on PSN Radio. It'll be on Apple, Google, and Spotify. Definitely subscribe and leave a rating to both of our pods, or, or PSN Radio, if, you, uh, if you're so kind. And now, let me introduce to you guys my experts and dupers. We're starting off with my man. I'm so curious how he comes up with these nicknames. Nickname, but ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Justin Guzantier Harvester Freiburg, and with this beautiful kid as well. What's up, Justin? I'm I'm doing pretty good. Uh, as I said before the show, the process of creating these names uh, is a labor of love, and this name has particular love because of my dislike for Brad Guzan. Um, <laughs> so, so shouts to, to the. The, the 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 bald the bald the bald himself uh brad i still don't like you um but <laughs> now nah, man i'm uh, i'm excited it was a good game over the weekend uh ready to review that and ready to uh ready to preview uh I, what i think is gonna be an interesting game if, if, if i'm if i'm being honest with myself Aren't they always? Aren't they always, Justin? And, and we'll we'll definitely have to send over like a like a GoPro or something. We'll have to find uh, the process that Justin comes up with coming up with these nicknames because they are pretty damn. Yeah, just like a little vlog, just like a little vlog of Justin <laughs> brainstorming nicknames for this the week's <laughs> episode. <laughs> well, you guys already heard our other co-host. Please welcome my man, Mr. Zach Labasso, who uh, came into this podcast boasting because his Cowboys won last night. But uh, Zach. What's happening, brothers? Good seeing you. I'm, I'm riding high, man. I'm riding high. It's a good day. Um, JV Varsity wins. JV goes to six and two on the season. Varsity to hey. five, two and one. Cowboys won last night. Go Cowboys. Um, and the Union won uh, on the weekend as well. So I mean, I, I'm I'm having a great week so far. Haven't had uh, a bad day. <laughs> well, I I need you to just keep this energy going for the Union this week. Can you do that for us? Hey, no, I'm 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 I'm. I'm confident going into a Red Bull game. Oh, okay. You hear that, Justin? He's because they he's getting a little optimistic on us. <laughs> well, here, is, is, here's is, the is, realism. Is, is Zach gonna is Zach gonna pull off the mask and it's really Tim? Is yeah, that, Tim. That's, the, that's the that's the twist. That's the reveal. You meddling dupers. <laughs> Absolutely. Where's Scooby Doo when you need him? <laughs> or Fang. Uh, Jared uh, is in the building. What's up, my brother, Jared? Give me Matt or give me death. I'm sure he's talking about our guest a little bit later in the show. All right, Jared. Shouts to Jared. Shouts to Jared getting on the Union uh, promo video there. That was pretty dope. And uh, Jared said he needs a review of the mac and cheese. Justin, did you get to try this? I saw the pictures. I'm really jealous. Yes, I, did. I did. love mac and cheese, man. I, yes, I did. And as I told Jared, because he was sitting right next to me, and the look on my face was of pure delight, that mac and cheese was the shit uh and <laughs> i i i was honestly amazed and i absolutely loved it and you know i i, I may need to uh start getting a, a weekly shipment of uh of the jared mac and cheese uh i'll pay shipping costs you know whatever it takes jared uh we'll uh we'll work we'll hash those details out it looked very good from the twitter post that i saw 
Uh, Jared, and I guess everyone, rumor has it that Jared did not use any seasoning for this mac and cheese. What he used instead and what you were tasting were the tears of a Lanny United fan. Mm, so yes. there you go. Yes, very <laughs> salty. That, that nice salt. Yeah, that very nice salty in those tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Let, let's, give, let's give some All respect right, yeah. to, to uh, uh, Miss Erica. Yes, yeah, she did it. Yeah, you, but you did, both. She, she did all a great job. If, uh, if we didn't, we didn't give her the the proper respect. <laughs> awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. We'll get to that Atlanta match, but we, we want to get to some business at hand, gentlemen, because um, we were a little bit in the, I guess, what you call it, the transferville or transfer mill, I guess, not really, but um, the union have loaned out. They didn't get in loanee. They loaned out um youth product uh, Cole Turner to El Paso Locomotive FC. So he's taking a He's taking his talents down to Texas, and uh, he'll be uh, continuing his play this this season over there with uh, El Paso, who are in USL. Um, guys, it really raises an interesting point because we really haven't talked about it. Look, we have invested a lot into the youth. We all know a portion of the transfer fee from Mark and Brendan went into the youth academy. And with the season, the, the, the transition that the MLS is going with, with this whole developmental league that starts in 2022, it does leave a group of players that are stuck in limbo, whether they do what Cole is doing right now or they just are not getting game time in general, which can be detrimental to your development. Um, I just wanted to get your guys' point of view. I mean, what your thoughts on uh, – we'll, we'll start with Zach here. Thoughts on Cole's uh, de- uh, leaving? What do you think of the player? I know, Zach, you, you like to be in tune with the, with the youth kids as well. Um, and your thoughts on just like wh- what's, what, are the, what do these kids do with this, with this limbo that's going on, man? Um, so I'm not really sure. Um, I would guess that they're going to play some sort of games, like probably friendlies or whatever. Um, while the season is not, um, going on. I mean, I think it's good for him because he's obviously not getting game time in this, in this squad that they have. Um, which only a few of the youth players are. Um, you've had Harry will come in when he needs to because we have issues at right back. And then the only other two are I, Paxton's getting more minutes as the season goes on. But Quinn and, and Jack are really the two mainstays that have been getting somewhat regular minutes. Um, so saw Crane and Craig as well. Yeah, and um, and uh, Matt Real, who dis- disappeared <laughs> from existence apparently. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just think it's, it's a good move because he needs minutes. If you're going to get better, you need minutes. Like you're not going to get better just practicing and probably being on the second team and getting beat up by the first team when they're scrimmaging or what, or whatnot in practice. Um, it's tough. And I think regular minutes is going to be good for players like him. And, and I think the union should, especially when this thing starts taken off this uh this league that they have going on um if they if the union can loan guys there as opposed to full transfers or whatever i think that'll definitely be a good move um to get guys who wouldn't normally play play more yeah i I agree with you and and i'm excited for that for cole just to go down there i mean I, i did like you know having you two uh, down in the USL ranks uh, simply because I just like the competition that kind of brings the most out of them. And I think that's why guys like Brennan and Mark developed the way they did. Um, but Justin, uh, anything, anything to add on that, man? Like what, what are your thoughts on this? And like, what do, what did the hell do these teams do with these kids? I, I mean, I, I think this was inevitable and, and, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. I think, listen, Cole only, appeared in one game and that was when everyone was gone so you know i mean really he's a he's a cdm and in that position you're stuck behind brujo and leon and and also bueno if you include you know now that you have bueno in the mix so listen if if you want to get him minutes maybe he pushes enough at el paso to where maybe next year the union consider you know giving him more of a shot or maybe he goes to el paso i don't know it like I think this idea that all our players have to go to Europe and all this have to be like generate this, you know, these high prices is is nuts. And I think this is the I mean, this is the the the, the reality of producing players. Not saying Cole Turner's a miss, but not every player is gonna be a home run. Sometimes sometimes it's just, you know, decent players. Some guys are MLS lifers, some guys 
bounced around the USL. I, you know, I'd be curious. And from what I've heard about El Paso, and I try to watch USL when I can. Um, typically, they're the ones that are on midweek, so I get the chance to watch. Um, usually, their games are a little later than MLS games, so I'll get you know in between. I've heard El Paso is a pretty defensive team, so throwing a, a CDM into a pretty defensive team is a pretty good recipe to build on, and I'm sure he'll get a decent amount of minutes. Uh, so I, I mean, I'm 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 excited. I, I'm I'm curious to see what you know if he starts to push, and and again, it's the idea that him going there is anything bad about the team no it's listen right. you're still producing players that are still playing at you know high levels like usl is not a, not a, you know the championship's not a slouch it's not the mls but it's still pretty you know pretty damn respectable league absolutely justin be honest with us you're watching usl to find some new kits to buy aren't you <laughs> yeah. you know i, I well, trust me, I'm on the pulse of that, of that, of that, <laughs> that, of that John. Let's, let's let's be honest here. Uh, and also, I do have, uh, you know, I, I I'm in a, I'm in a few soccer chats. Uh, shout out to uh, to Gully Squad and the best soccer hey. show Slack. Uh, so I I got my I got my finger on the pulse on uh, various things, and there was one that I actually had to ref- restrain myself from buying. It was the OKC Energy kit it's a green and it's it's a green and pink kit check oh. it out it's it's pretty wild and honestly i've thought about it at least once a month that <laughs> that kit is like straight fire is it for um, madison in usl yeah well they're in league two, two. actually you know what uh let me well now it could be league one if they play their cards right huh 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 let me uh let me see if i can pull uh what were you gonna say zach real quick um, the Detroit City FC um, charity kit that they just came out with is okay. pretty awesome. Well, right. MLS, if you're thinking about expansion, bring Detroit, please. I like that sports town. I don't think – well, I mean, DC FC is not coming, but – All right, yeah. you know what? I've uh, I've found the pick, so let me – let see if I can share my screen and not uh, – da, da, da. There usually is a way to do that. You see, uh, why does it not want to? Uh, oh, wait, here we go. Chrome tab, share. So, here. oh, know, geez, it, Louise, guys, the street right? trip. Ah, I... oh, that's fire! That's fire! Right, that's... like straight up, that is fire. That's so, fire. if y'all like, no, like, like I said, that's the one that I've been, I've been sleeping on, and I. I don't know if I should sleep on it much longer because it's it's tempting to be honest. We 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 really are doing the listeners who are going to probably listen to this on, on a pod a disservice. So what we'll do, I will tweet it out from the Dupe by the River Twitter account because these people need to see what the heck we just saw. So because that was really beautiful, good stuff, good stuff by our man Justin there. But uh, all right, let's get to the action on the pitch here, guys. Um, so as we know. Oh, uh, this past week, uh, Saturday, nice afternoon game. It was a nice day game. I think it was the first one of the season. I, I think. I was... uh, well, no, Orlando's was four thirty. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Three thirty was three thirty. I think is a better time. In all honesty, I that's a nice solid time because then you Saturday. go home and you still have plenty to do the rest of the day. Hell yeah! And that's the beauty of soccer. It's only two hours, so you know exactly when you're going to get out. But. Exactly. Uh, it was a beautiful day. It was a great day for soccer. And I, and if you watched our pep episode preview the Atlanta match, we all weren't really feeling too confident uh, what 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 were, was going to happen on Saturday afternoon. Uh, simply because Atlanta was was hot, and we weren't sure. We don't really know. I mean, I still like even after Saturday, I still don't really know what we really are, how good we really are this season. Um, but at in the end, it, it, it was a barn burn. It was a typical land in Philly. There, there was some pushing and shoving. There was a nice little scene from El Brujo. We'll talk about El Brujo in a second with El Ezequiel Barco. Um, but in the end, thanks to a nice El Brujo run in the 70s, was able to find Kasper Shibuko, who was able to just poke that pass. Uh, Justin's favorite goal, goalkeeper in the MLS, Brad Guzan. And that was really the difference. Atlanta really couldn't do much else. Um, and the union would win. Uh, I really want to commend, and it's true, and we know how this union team is built when the defense is on point. And I thought I really want to commend the defense. I think that as a unit, the defense did a pretty solid job um, on Saturday, kind of like con- 
neutralizing, controlling um, Atlanta United's attack. I mean, when you hold Atlanta, who we're putting up some good numbers. I mean, I think they were averaging like three goals in our three wins. Um, six shots, two on target. Uh, I'll I'll take that. I will absolutely take that all day. Um, so definitely want to commend um, the defense to start off there. And as we all know, if the Union defense is doing its job, that makes everyone's job easier. And El Brujo was able to make a nice run to find Casper Shipilko. Um, uh, Zach, I want to, uh, you know what? Yeah, no, Zach, we'll start with you, my man. What did you see uh, from the Union in, in this match that impressed you? Was it the defense? If you want to talk about the attack, you let me know, man. Um. I thought it was just an overall very good performance, um, top to bottom. I thought that they were consistent. Uh, and, yeah, I just thought the consistent through throughout the consistency throughout all 90 minutes was what impressed me the most. Like, there weren't many, if any, lulls, like, where Atlanta kind of, like, picked up the pace and had the momentum. Like, it was really the Union kind of just controlling the game, and they they played their game, and it worked. Um, so that was, that was what was most impressive to me was how consistent they were over the course of the full 90. Yeah. You're, you're, I mean, that's the one thing too. Like it's crazy because it is back to back, uh, games where it was consistent play and obviously they won the game. Um, Justin, look, that was a good performance, but are you sold on this attack or what else do you need to see for this, from this attack, my man? Uh, you know, for once, I think I, I think this attack showed me what it can be. Um, you know, Jim said it best, and I think a lot of people said it. This game could have easily been two or three nothing, but the way that the the Union were really pressing hard, and the biggest thing, the biggest difference that allowed the Union to get all their chances was the was the play of Olivia Mbizo and Kai Wagner. They were pressing higher up the field, and it You're forced. Right. Atlanta's 3-5-2 into a, a, a 5-4-1 because they were forcing they were putting trying to put a lot of people behind the ball and it just wasn't working for them and but the union had pl- a ton of chances. I mean that game could have and probably should have been at least 2 or 3 nothing. But the nice thing was you finally saw it clicking. You finally saw you know, Gazdag really getting involved. Jamiro at his best position as a shuttler. You had Leon. You finally, you finally gave Ali a, a break. Like, <laughs> wow, Jim actually rotated for once. Like, what is going on right now? And, you know, quietly, you've now built a two-game winning streak. You have the potential to, I think, in potential, you could stretch it to four. I think with Red Bull and with Columbus, I think you have the potential to keep this going and keep remember you still have a game in hand because of your schedule. You still have a game in hand. So that'll come in big in this, you know, this stretch, you can still finish as high as second. Second is not, uh, you know, out of, out of reach. And I think there was all this doom and gloom going on, you know, and we were guilty of it, of kind of being like, well, we're, you know, we're a little worried and, you know, two pretty decent games back to back. And, it seems like this team is, you know what, if this team can get hot in this last stretch, they might, they're, I'm not saying they're going to be dangerous, but you, there might, you might host more than one playoff game. If you can keep this going. I, that's what it's all about. And that's what we kind of talked about when we got eliminated against Cuba America. It's now fix this attack, get those little kinks out of the way. And let's let's focus on the playoffs. Let's get this ball rolling so we can move into the playoffs. Um, guys, don't look don't look too far now. But I mean, your Philadelphia or I'm sorry, your our Philadelphia Union um, with these back to back impressive performance have escalated themselves in a tie for fourth place with Orlando City. And they have 38 points. Um, and I, I think right now, uh, I mean, Nashville's not a lock at two, but obviously New England, there's no way no one's chasing New England. Um, but for right now, I mean, there's no reason why the Union can't finish between two and four. So, absolutely, Justin, and and it's it's all it's all about momentum. Sports is a very it's it's very dependent on momentum, and I think that the Union just need to keep the ball rolling here. Um, I want to ask you, Zach, because it's no secret you uh, you're very critical on El Brujo Martinez. To me, 
I've seen be- like much much better performances as of late. What have what did you see on uh, on on uh, Saturday? Because I thought he was one of the better players on the pitch. Uh, uh, he has been playing much better recently, um, and like his assist was fantastic. And that's an area where I'm cool with him dribbling. It's like the times, where, but but like it, it goes back to like the times where he dribbles like 25 yards outside our box and tries to split two defenders or two forwards. I guess really that that that's what like makes me nervous, and that's why I don't rate him as highly as other people do, um, because sometimes he does do boneheaded stuff on the ball where like you're a defensive midfielder, like if you are in your defensive third, your job is to connect passes and build us up the field, not do something magical and beat three people and dribble through them. You can do that when you're higher up the field, like he did where he had that incredible assist. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, he's been, he's been much better recently. And like I said, I think he's definitely going to be sold. Um, I, although he said he doesn't want to leave, but if the right price got like, I can't imagine teams aren't knocking on the door after his Copa America performance. Um, so like in the rain, like if the union get offered like two to three million for him, like are they going to say no? No, right? Like you're saying yes to that. Damn. Especially uh, with Leon at 20 years old, like you have his replacement already. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. not like they have to go search for someone or and pay for someone. Uh, PJ, you're right. Martinez does need to stop shooting. That is the one thing he needs to stop doing. Yeah, All right. holy but, guacamole! Listen, like Jim does Lord. bring up a good point, presser. By shooting that far, it does bring up the back line a little bit, which is able to open up some space for some of those forwards. The, here's the issue. I, I've i only seen one accurate shot by a Brujo like that, and I think that was against Club America, and that was an easy one save that, by like, Memo that Choa. Memo kind of just like... Yeah. Loaded, and like <laughs> Memo could have like, started, you know... He could have taken out uh, and started making some uh, El Pastor tacos, and <laughs> could have like could have just set up a, a George Foreman and started cooking, and you know, uh, uh, hell, he had some time to make that save. Yeah, I, I mean, the, so that I mean, obviously, if I mean that, and that was a good, it was a funny point that Jim brought up. Now, if it's Glesnes and it's forty-five yards, how he better shoot now. But in all seriousness, I mean. Agreed. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with the long shots. Um, I just haven't seen El Brujo being all too dangerous with those long shots. Now that remains to be seen. I mean, he could be lucky on one of them. There could be a deflection. Uh, all that type of stuff can very well happen. I'm not entirely um, too mad at. Now, one thing I will say, one thing I'm very critical on Brujo is Brujo needs to just relax sometimes. He's a little bit of a hothead and I understand why. I mean, like I, I could be like that too. And, and it's funny. Uh, Justin and Zach, we need, we need to play soccer soon because sometimes I, I feel like I do reckless, I'm not slide tackling and breaking people's uh, ankles here. Um, but, um, you know, the whole Barco the, with the Ezekiel Barco stuff, uh, that was that was hilarious. I, I'm sorry, but that was absolutely hilarious. No, I, and, I, I'm, I, and I'm fine with like, I'm fine with like shithousery and stuff like that. <laughs> but, I, but like, the thing is, is like, it can't lead to a fight where then he ends up getting a red card for fighting. Like he can do that and then someone can push him and he just goes down and that's it. And then the other guy gets the yellow or red well, card. But that's the but thing. The though, issue that... is, is he will always fight back. Well, and that's no, the... see, no, I, I don't. Bruno is the type of guy that will instigate, but he never really, he draws you into it. He's really I don't know, not man. the one that tends to, and like, Listen, and, and, and this game, I've been saying this for a while, and I think it, for all the shit that, like, every time, regard, and, like, the, the constant thing I heard after this game, and it's the same thing I've heard every single time since CCL, is, you, you, you know, if you didn't know soccer, you would think that the uh, the Union are the only team that, that engage in, in shithousery, in time-wasting, in, you know, and kind of maybe taking a little longer to uh, take a goal kick or a throw in, or uh, yeah. you know, it's you know, according to Atlanta fans, we're the only ones that ever do that. And you know, Joseph Martinez did it one time, you know, when he missed a goal and then looked like he was dying, and then within two minutes ran back on the field, you know, and tried to you know try to take someone out. So like, yeah, no, it's just us. So I hope Atlanta fans, you know, listen, it ain't just us and. 
whatever. Like I, I'm just tired of the same same retread of these of these takes. It is pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. To you. PJ, no heat, just a polo today. No heat, just PJ, a polo. So, PJ showing some love to uh, Zach's Japan kit. Zach, or sorry, Zach, Justin, Justin, what is this Japan kit you're wearing? It's the uh, it's the actual the, national team. It's a national team kit. Yeah, that I honestly I, I saw this and I think I ordered this in the uh, the the other Columbia kit I have like the same day. It was hey. like I think I had uh, Ad- like I was was it Adidas or like running like I had some some money or whatever. So I got like both of them total like sixty bucks. It was uh it was pretty pretty fire. Not gonna lie, I lo- I love this kit. PJ, I, I, I will have I will have both Venezia kits very soon. Oh though. snap. I will oh, have man. both Venezia kits very soon. Paul Catrino, uh, shout out, hooked it up. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, as soon as I, as soon as I get the game, get to a game, um, I will get those from Paul because he has them, and um, no one wants to waste money on shipping. P, uh, PJ, I'm sorry, I, I don't have a, all my fresh kits are upstairs. All I have next to me is a Jerome Brown jersey, so I, 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 I lost. I lost. <laughs> what What is up, my man? What's up, Matt? Uh, we got, yes, sir, I live in Venezia, not my Serie A team, uh, but a huge soft spot for the side. Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I happen to still have a soft spot for Napoli. I saw that uh, win, who they beat up, uh, it was a Genoa. It was a good win by them. Um, uh, I saw something else PJ mentioned. Uh, what's the chance that Caster breaks the scoring record this season? The Where union we scoring with- record, or because uh, it can't no, be the MLS scoring record. No, I don't think ah. <laughs> I, what Seba's record. I don't think that's I thought it was CJ. No. Well, does Seba have it all? Oh, wait, Seba ha- or CJ has the. Are you talking about the single season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what sixteen. And what does that count? It. Wait, does no, that count? Just, because it's, no, it's, it's it's just strictly it's just strictly. Yeah, he's, he's not he's not breaking it. Because that's what yeah, is he only got nine What is he have nine? Right now. We have what yeah, seven four. games left? Or no, we have nine games left. Couple hat tricks. Come on now, dude. <laughs> Okay, let's let's talk let's talk about Casper real quick though because um, yes, he scored he scored two games in a row now right I'm He's still back, not right? on the, I'm, no he is not oh yeah yeah let's let's uh let's the, let's just say let's just say Zach I mean you started talking smack and uh, yeah. yeah no 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 listen listen four a hey, four games in a row or four in five so if he scores in two of the next three or the next two in a row. I will give him the consistency mark of approval. Actually, so I'm I'm looking at it. Uh, 2019, he came close to tying it. Yeah, he, he had 15 and see. four, and last yeah. year he had eight and six in uh, the regular season. Eight so, and, six. and um, and uh, what what who's who's leading right now? Is it Rui Diaz still, or is uh, no, um, no, isn't it? Uh, let's look. Ola Kamara. Oh uh, yeah, I think it is tomorrow. Well, I'll tell you what, we got another good one. Sergio Santos needs one more hat trick to be the leading hat tricker in Union history. Yeah, Ola Kamara was sixteen. Three <laughs> Diaz is fourteen. Uh, it, Seba, uh, uh, Roland Alber- Alberg, CJ Sapong, and Sergio all have one hat trick each in their Union career. So there you um, go. Guys. How has Rui Diaz been hurt? Because I feel like he's been on fourteen goals for the past like month I, and a half. I think he's subbed in the last game. I think he's coming back from injury. Okay, because I was gonna say he's been on fourteen goals for quite some time. Ah, uh, um, here we go. Here we go. CJ has it. It's sixteen or it's seventeen. Six, sixteen. Gustavo Bo has twelve goals and. Carlos Hill has 16 assists. <laughs> we got a Justin Stan here. Very nice. Very nice. Dude, Car- Carlos Hill is outrageous. Yeah. 16 assists in 22 games. <laughs> Wait, what's what's at Biba's record? 20 something? I don't know, man. That's insanity. Uh, I hope he doesn't break it, man. I hope he doesn't break that because like, we, need, we need to keep that with, with El Pibe Valderrama. Um, but all right, so let, let's let's wrap up here. Look, it, it was it's we're getting the ball. That, that's that's the goal here. That's the motto here. Is in this ball, and let's get let's get the momentum going. Um, let's race through here. There's an opportunity here to potentially get the second seed. And I don't know about you guys, but I want as much home 
field advantage or home pitch advantage we can get in the playoffs. I know New England locked up the East, but if we can get a couple playoff home games, I will take that. I will absolutely take that. So um, we move on from Atlanta. We'll see. Well, hopefully we don't see those guys later. But um, next up, from one team we don't like to another team we don't like. Uh, Wednesday, we got a midweek match. We're traveling up to North Jersey to face off against the New York Red Bull. And look, it's it's is kind of feels like a different New New York Red Bull and Union matchup here. Uh, but we'll get into all that because you know why? We got on another guest to preview this match. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, a friend, a dear friend to the podcast, the only Red Bull fan will allow. No, we'll allow Red Bull fans. But please, ladies and gentlemen, from the EPL boys. Matt uh, uh, he's here, how, he's there, he's every fucking where Matt oh, <laughs> oh, oh, straight straight to my heart. How how are my favorite Philadelphians? How are you guys? I'd say doing pretty well right about the, now. E- the Eagles fans aren't great, but I'm doing just fine. <laughs> I'm doing just fine. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I'm an old man. I'm, I'm in bed at like nine forty-five most nights. I'm not uh, and uh, I'm yeah, I woke, woke up this morning. I saw that score line. I was like, ugh, Philly. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not easy no. being a, a, a Philly sports fan. So we, we went through that. Currently, right now, I have the Phillies losing to the Braves, which in, in, a, in a semi much must win uh, game here. And uh, tomorrow, I'm hoping that the Union can put a smile on my face. But uh, we'll get to all that. But, Matt, first off, man, we want to know, how are you doing, man? How, how are the EPL boys doing these days? And give me the Everton update, please, because obviously, you know, I'm not watching too much Prem these days. Uh, well, I mean, at least, I mean, Everton are doing pretty good. I'm not an Everton fan, but Everton are doing pretty good. Um, they honestly, um, the big issue was, is how are they going to replace uh, James Rodriguez uh, with him now on his way to Qatar? The big thing was, or how are they going to replace him? And they brought in for almost no money. They brought in Townsend from Crystal Palace and Damari Gray from Leicester. Damari Gray's been unreal. And he, for the amount of money they spent on him, I mean, they spent pennies, theoretically. And this guy has been phenomenal. And honestly, Everton, especially now under Rafa Benitez, they could be building something. But uh, the EPL boys are good. JD is good. Um, we are, you know, we're chugging along our two episodes a week as always. So, I mean, yeah, uh, quick shout out. Give us a follow on the Instagram because, I, because I've been lazy and I haven't been on Twitter. So, yeah, yeah that's that's literally <laughs> the only reason to, to, I don't to blame check you. us out on Instagram. Yeah. I don't blame you. Uh, wait, Matt just said Everton's actually spending good money. That's the first time I've heard that in a while. So uh, we started this podcast off on the right note there. All right. There, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Anything can happen. And that's why I'm hoping going into talking about the Red Bull, anything yeah. can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get to that. But, but before we get to any action on the pitch, look, we all saw what the Viking supporters group tweeted out. And I think for most fans, I don't care if you're a union NYCFC, or even if you're an LA galaxy fan, I think you can connect to what the Viking supporters group were saying. I mean, we've all seen what's been going on with the Red Bull, especially us here in Philly. We watched it closely. You guys have developed a lot of great young talent and not really seen the profit from it. You guys have definitely declined. And you're upset, and I think you guys deserve to feel upset for what the club has been doing to you guys. Kind of like what you know, talk about what's been going on with that situation. Anything you can add on? I know you you go to your fair a uh, fair share of matches uh, at Red, Red Bull Arena, and just kind of the state of uh, the union, I guess you could say, with yeah. Red Bull fans. Well, funny enough, funny enough that you say state of the union. Um, to go on to the attendance, I don't think I've missed the game now for like five or six years and i don't know if that's a compliment or a punishment but yes. um yes <laughs> <laughs> but um honestly funny enough i have the toughest time agreeing with alexi lawless on 90 percent of the things oh, that come Jesus. out of his yeah, mouth he sucks now he's you and like every fan let's be honest there He's but I'll, the worst. But I'll be honest. He put out his. He put and honestly, I usually don't listen to his stuff. But someone did share it along our Viking Army group chat, and they did like, "Hey, just skip to ten minutes." And honestly, everyone has seen his tweet and how he is a hundred percent backing what the Viking Army did. And honestly, what was kind of a shock is, at least for the Viking Army's point of view, is. The, our fellow supporters in the supporters group, because it is divided into three separate groups, 
they were behind us. They understood what we did. And it seemed like, hey, we get it because we're the ones traveling all the way to the West Coast. We're the ones going all the way to Canada. We're the ones traveling. We're the ones who are investing more of our money and time into this club than anyone else. Our biggest problem was, is we got a lot of backlash from our other fellow supporters, those outside of the supporter sections. And that was something that I know personally, people who took a lot of hate and basically it was back and forth on social medias. And I haven't heard anything kind of like where it's an in-person confrontation, but this will be our first home game since the sign. And I'm very interested into seeing how things play out. It, it is going to be very interesting, but to what Alexi Lalas was saying is, we're not paying to watch our best players go to Europe. We're not watching our best. We're not paying money and giving our time to just have see the product for a year. I mean, Caden Clark is a prime issue. This kid isn't even fully developed yet, and he's already going to Leipzig next year. Like, we don't even get to see the semi-finished result. Like, at least with Tyler Adams, we got a year and a half, two years. With some of the other guys we've had, we get a year, and then they're gone. And it's extremely unfair. I mean, it, it. I'm someone who follows everything going on in the USL as well. So a lot of these kids coming through, the 15 and 16-year-olds, I'm seeing them, and it's extremely upsetting to see at 15 or 16 years old, a year or two before they're even probably going to be considered for the MLS squad, they're already being hinted at going to Salzburg. Or, hey, Jesse Marsh is keeping an eye at him from Leipzig. And it's like, okay, cool. This guy is another. You can The writing's on the wall. You can see what is going to happen before it even happens. And honestly, for fans, that's the reason why I think our attendance has gotten to where it is. Because it's no secret, Red Bull Arena, it's tough to have such a big... Um, to have such a big stadium. Cause we do, we have a larger stadium compared to some MLS teams. It's hard to fill it because people aren't going to come for 16 and 17 year old Academy kids and a bunch of players who they've never heard of before. They came for, they came for Sasha question. They came for Luis Robles. They came for Bradley Wright Phillips. All these guys are gone now. And honestly, that's the thing that's kind of now separating the entire fan base. Some people are just, Hey, this is the process. It's what you pay for. And then, like I said, most of the supporters, this just isn't good enough. We're traveling. I mean, I still have, I have flight plans for multiple games, not only for the rest of this season, but already lined up for the next season when the set schedule gets released. I'm putting in my time, money, and patience into this club. And I'm basically being told from fellow supporters that, hey, you guys have it good. Stop complaining. <laughs> Damn, that's it's it's and of course of all game of all matches to have this first match since that since that incident, uh, it's against the union. You know, go 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 figure with that one. But uh, nah, I, I definitely I definitely sympathize and I I understand what exactly you are saying. Uh, real quick, I wanted to ask you out of curiosity, did you got have you guys lost the majority of the actual New York citizens uh, to NYCFC? Yes and no. So really, I mean, I personally have not seen someone who has been coming to games for years coming from the New York area who has decided, hey, yeah, I'm just not going to come anymore. I'm going to go to the, you know, the closer team that we saw our initial drop in fans the second the team had their inaugural season. Basically, it looked like a lot of people committed right from there that, hey, I'm just going to go support them. They're closer. Or, hey, I don't like what the Red Bull are doing. I'm going to go because David Villa and Manchester City, that's what they're going to go for. They're going to go for Andre Pierlo. They're going to go for guys like that. Yeah, that worked out well. Wait, hold on. The 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 irony of that statement going from a energy drink conglomerate to oil money. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're so much so much better morally. I mean, really. honest, honestly, I just find it extremely, extremely funny that – you know, it's too funny that now, you know, it's no surprise as well you see on social media. And again, I'm not going to sit here and make fun of another team situation. But now NYCFC supporters have started their homeless campaign where they're all walking around with homeless T-shirts because they don't have a home. Yeah, that's that's pathetic because like there's actual people who are homeless and you guys yeah. are complaining that you guys are being ran by a multi-billion dollar company. Um yeah, 
I'm sorry, but yeah, it's one of those things where basically people like originally when the teams were like, when that team was announced, people went over, we were seeing limited edition, like first season, like still ML, like still when the first years of Red Bull arena, there were South ward scarves that were created like specific South ward, ward scarves. And now we're seeing some of them in the third rail. They're just flipped upside down. You can tell that, you know, some people did leave, but I don't think our attendance slowly declining. It's them going to city. I think it's them just stop watching or at least stop supporting MLS in general because NYCFC are still in a very bad position. Their stadium, just like ours, is experiencing some of the, is experiencing some of the lowest attendance that they've ever experienced since the club started. And I don't know if that also has to do with anything with COVID. I know COVID is still a massive factor. I know supporters who have gone to every single game since I've been a part of the club since, you know, right around when Red Bull Arena first started. And they haven't come, even though they're vaccinated and they understand the situation, they just don't want to come because they still don't feel well enough to go. So it is one of those things where, people are still very hesitant. And I feel like it's going to take a few years before every MLS team is going to be able to experience a full crowd. Uh, I will say this. I don't care how you may feel about Red Bull or about NYCFC. If you love the MLS, you have to recognize what the MLS is allowing to, to happen in the New York market is a disgrace. The fact that the Red Bull have been treated like the bottom of the bottom of the Red Bull pyramid and the same thing goes with city. I mean, I think I, I'm, I'm not sure what goes on in Mel, Melbourne City, but um, obviously we know Man City is the top dog, and there's really not much of a of a care for NYCFC besides collecting that check. But I think the MLS needs to step in as somehow. Um, I don't know if it's Red Bull. I don't think Red Bull will sell off, or City won't sell off. But at like like a little heads up, a little or a little wake up call. I mean. I, I literally saw the NBA walk into my Sixers and say, "You got to stop this tanking." I'm not, and I and I don't know. I don't understand why Garber can't like say, "Like, hey, you, look, this is what's happening. This is the biggest market in our country." Wait, I can, not- I can, I can give you uh, about what is it, three hundred million reasons? <laughs> uh, is that the current? Uh, is that what Charlotte's paying? Is that the current uh, asking price of uh, of expansion fees right now? Um, so I'll definitely say that is a big factor because Garber has said it himself, like the league's expanding. You have Charlotte coming in next year. You have St. Louis coming in the following year. You have right now, I believe Las Vegas is leading for that next spa that was going to be Sacramento's. Um, yeah, that would be a great city to have, but I I think the Raiders and Knights, John, I will say. I think the slight difference between how Red Bull is treated and how NYCFC are treated, it's I, I'm not sure it's a direct correlation. If you look at NYCFC, yeah, they're not exactly high on the totem pole, but a lot of players have been able to start at NYCFC and then yeah, and they do the whole thing, you know, they loan out to Various. You look at, you know, was it? Uh, I think Angel Herrera was loaned from Man City to, uh, to NYCFC. It, Jack Harrison was yeah. one where I was about to he, say Jack Harrison's like, the big he one. He went. Yeah. He was in college. Went to NYCFC. You know, really, he was it, at Leeds, and I think now it's finally official that he was sold. But I think it's not so much as a feeder club. More NYCFC is kind of treated as a. But much as a launching pad, now their stadium situation is terrible. But I mean, it's in all honesty, Red Bull. Like at this point, I'm curious if they're even treated higher than what was it the I can say Brazil is it Brazilian yeah. club? Yeah, like, it is Brazil. Yeah, like are they are are they even lower than the Brazilian club? Because it seems like uh, it, well, it, 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 Red Bull at this point, New York is just hey, we have a product in America. That's it. Like they don't actually. The only thing I would say, I mean, it also depends. I mean, Fabio, you know, is actually a product of the Brazilian Red Bull team. So (laughs) him being loaned to us is kind of very interesting because a lot of fans, including myself, are sitting here going, 
wait, is that them loaning him to us because it thinks it'll make us better? Or is it just because we're lower on the totem pole and they're just trying to get a guy playing time? Again, this is <laughs> kind of say, like... Maybe say he then goes to Salzburg and Leipzig. Is it well, like a reverse kind of slingshot I, effect? I, I have, again, when it comes to this entire system that I'm a part of, unfortunately, it's we really, we really don't know. And honestly, and I think that's that's the part I think for fans that sucks the most. I mean, honestly, this is how I look at it. And I, I agree. I agree with what Alexi Lala said, where it's just basically like it's hard to invest time and money and patience and passion into a club that you know what you're going to get from. Like, you know you're going to get. And then the Red Bull will turn around and, you know, complain that, you know, oh, well, if more people were in the stands, we would be able to do something about it. Well, yeah, put something on the field. You're going to get your season ticket holders. You're always going to get your season ticket holders. Your job as a club is to get the non-season ticket holders through the door to attend a game, to get concessions, to go into a bowl shop, to buy a jersey, that's your club's responsibility. And yet, for some odd reasons, they're looking at us like it's the supporters' fault. Oh, the supporters don't show up, therefore we must not care. That's 100% not true. Trust me, this team could be in dead last, and I'd still show up to games. Yeah, would my pride and passion be through the roof? Again, that would be kind of, I'd have to see it. But at some points this season, we hit rock bottom, at least what we thought of for this club and you know it's it's again it's frustrating and i mean honestly i feel like every club at some point has gone through it unless you're seattle or atlanta where basically you entered the league and basically just dumped a ton of money into your system and hey within two years you won a trophy honestly i think that's something that like for a lot of red bull fans ever since atlanta won a trophy and again we at this point consider atlanta a decent rival i wouldn't say it's anywhere near our main rival but a decent rival to us because they came in the league and immediately contested with us with being one of the best teams in the mls and the reason why they had an x factor is because they dumped a ton of money into a great defensive structure a world well at least mls wise world-class center attacking mid and a world-class striker at least mls standards like that was the x factor that was the thing Red Bull and no other team could keep up with. Look what Seattle's doing. They just dump money into their system and it works. New England have dumped money into the system and it works. It's a shame that certain clubs, I'm only going to mention mine at the moment, and you, do, you, you don't you don't <laughs> invest money. You bank your entire entire team structure on a bunch of unproven guys from Europe and a bunch of 16, 17 and 18 year olds through the academy. And then you complain, why aren't things working? That's basically taking a bunch of puzzle pieces from different boxes and trying to put them all together. And then you're complaining on why it doesn't fit. It sounds eerily similar to Philadelphia. Just the results a little different. Um, well, I was, I don't want to cut you off, but honestly, I like what Philly's done. I like the fact that you guys have a manager that you've built a system with. You have a mixture of balance of, you know, senior guys who are able to grab victories as well as mixing some of that youth in the process as well. Like you guys have, in my opinion, one of the best players in the MLS in Andre Blake. And I look at him and I go, that's something an entire team can build on. And I think that's what Aaron Long was originally for this club. He was the senior star that the entire team could look at and be like, hey, he's going to make sure that we're keeping our head straight. Now he took that injury. And again, that did hurt, but honestly, the Red Bull were in a good, were not in a good position when that happened. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I, so I think for me, the main difference uh, between both, be, between both the clubs is obviously the ownership structure. Um, I, obviously we are, I guess, semi-independently owned by Joe, Jay Sugarman's company. But I think Union fans are worried because I think I still think we're early on in our process of success. Um, but I, I think we worry about relying too much on this academy. Whereas right now we have a good team, but we still lack that killer to find. Like you just mentioned, like a Miguel Amiron or a Joseph Martinez or you know even out Seattle Raul Ruiz, and we're still lacking that. And I think that's what Union fan, fans are, are worried about: is if if uh, we won't put up that money 
to go get that player that can el- escalate us into a, a championship caliber uh, team. Yeah. We are, you know what? I shouldn't even say that because we are now, but the team that, you know, like what New England's doing right now. Um, yeah. But having look- a center forward who's going <laughs> to score, like, no, but seriously, like, like, like Matt said, like having, having someone like Joseph Martinez, right? Totally changes the shape of your club because of the fact that out of nothing, he could win you a game by himself. And that was the same thing with Almiron too. He, they had two of them. The union right now, as much as I think Daniel Gazdag could be that guy, he's still getting accustomed to MLS and he's still getting accustomed to the whole system that they're running. You don't have another guy like that. Like Casper's not taking the ball from 45, 50 yards from our goal, beating seven people and putting one in the top corner. I hate to break it to everyone, but he's not doing it. He's going to score his tap-ins every once in a while, and, and it's going to be good. But having a talisman who you can – and we have one in the back, which is and, – and Andre keeps us in games, but he can't win us games. He can keep us from losing games. And that's the difference, I think, for Philly especially, is we have the, we have the foundation of something that could be great. It's just they haven't splurged enough to make it what it could be. Very good points. These are definitely good points. Uh, Matt, I, I want to know about this uh, current New York Red Bull team that we're about to face off tomorrow. You guys, look, uh, you know, we talked about what went down on Twitter and all the supporters group drama. Uh, Lexi Lawless had to get involved, but you wound up bouncing back and you got yourselves uh, a solid win against the uh, against NYCFC on Saturday, one to nothing. Um, what, so what, what is this team that we're going to face off against tomorrow? What should we be looking out for? Uh, the key things are, and this is, and again, I'm saying this with about the biggest grain of salt on humanly possible. You're going to be playing against a Red Bull side where confidence looks like they're on the, up. like, honestly, a massive win on the road against, in, uh, inter Miami, which I mean, not a big win, but <laughs> I mean, um, I'll be honest with you. Like I looked at my friends, we, you know, it was an away game. So we all met up somewhere. And I literally said, if we don't beat Miami tonight, I'm just TVs off for the rest of the year. Um, You know, we got a very, very lucky draw against city, but honestly it was a draw where we didn't deserve to be in the game. We had to create a little bit, a little bit of our own luck and a very lucky handball in the 98th minute or something like that. Uh, and yeah, that's a little bit of that. That's some Fergie time love right there. But again, that's still a result where Red Bull fans and Red Bull players walked out of the game feeling all very confident. And then to turn around to go to City only a few days later, and with all due respect to anything City fans might think, but Red Bull played them out of the stadium. Uh, if the Red Bull could have found any decent shooting boots that night, that game could have easily been two nothing or three nothing. And that's been the Red Bull's biggest problem is the Red Bull have no issue going after the first goal. They'll get the first goal. The one problem they have is putting pedal to the metal to get the second goal. That's the issue Red Bull have had all season. When we played against you guys being a man up, we scored a goal and then we sat back and parked the bus against the 10 man side. I've never seen any team in soccer ever do that. And that's the reason why we dropped two points. This entire season has been based off of dropping points, unnecessary points. The team you're going to get this weekend, it, I could probably tell you right off the bat who you're going to get starting lineup wise. Um, more, Yeah, more than likely you are going to get a back four. Uh, John Tolkien being probably the brightest star of this season, 18 years old, of course, you know, an Academy product has to be our, you know, shining star. Uh, you're probably going to get Sean Nealis. You're going to get Andres Reyes, who has been a mat who's stepped up massively over the past few weeks. Um, he's been just having injury problems all season, but it looks like he's finally healthy. Uh, Tom Edwards, no, no more, no more red cards, no more red cards. Um, well, hmm. I'd like to say confidently no, but I'm going to knock on wood. Because <laughs> knowing, he's got, knowing, yeah, he's got some bad distaste towards us too. Guys, remember the MLS is back tournament. Oh, great, that's what I need. Um, that's what I need. Andres Reyes with an edge. Um, <laughs> uh, God, that's like going into a candy store with a child and just saying no the whole time. Eventually, something's just going to blow up. Um, you're going to get Tom Edwards, uh, another shining star for this club. He has been. Um, 
he has been someone I see the Caden Clark thing. I'll get to that in a second. Um, uh, you're going to get Tom Edwards, who has been a massive, massive boost for our back line. Uh, coming from Stoke City, he clearly is the veteran presence back there. Um, and he's done an absolutely incredible job. Um, his long throwing capabilities have been huge for this team. We've gotten a couple really nice goals, or at least caused a little bit of chaos, from the fact that he can probably throw the ball in from basically the quarter mark all the way to the corner flag. So he does give us that X factor of basically having a corner anywhere on his side of the field if we get a throw in in the midfield you're going to get your probably usual suspect you're going to get sean davis a captain who has been stepping up christian caceres jr has been huge uh you're going to get omir fernandez who might finally be the replacement to kaku this club finally has had it's only taken so many years for a coach to actually trust him so you're probably most likely going to get him as well you may get caden clark there's no guarantee you might because Drew Yearwood has been playing absolutely incredible. He has been a pure, perfect complement to Sean Davis and CCJ for that defensive structure that they're looking to do. The Red Bull will play more defensive and allow just their three players to go forward. The three players being Omir Fernandez. You're most likely going to get a uh, front two of Fabio and Patrick Kamala. Kamala, who has now, I believe, gone three or four straight games with a goal. So he is, oh no, he did not score in the last one. So he was on a streak of three straight games with a goal before the away game against City. Again, this team is going to press. Honestly, I, I think we talked about this the last time we were here, which is both teams are going to kind of have the same game plan. They're both going to set up in the diamond in the middle with a two striker system. They're going to press you very hard. I said the last time we were here, what I thought the X factor was going to be was Philadelphia's experience. Because at the time when we first played you guys, we were still a very young team that didn't really know each other. So we're still getting used to it. And I think that's probably going to be the biggest X factor going into tomorrow's game. Very good point. I remember John Tolkien definitely uh, was tearing us up, especially in that first half of that first game on that rainy night in North Jersey. And, and Tom Edwards also seems to be like perpetually... Like, someone just told him that, like, Santa Claus doesn't exist. And he just said <laughs> that perpetual, like... He's done, He's done like, fan interviews. Like, we, like, sometimes, even with COVID, like, the Red Bull have been active where they're still doing, like, fan, like, events and stuff like that. And Tom Edwards has done some from a distance. He just looks like a guy who wants to be happy, just doesn't know how to be happy. Exactly. Like, like he just joy. always just... He just looks upset and mad 24-7. And sometimes you kind of want that in a defender. I don't want my defenders smiling. I want my defenders looking really mad. Yeah, but uh, the, the guys that smile are the ones that are good at, like, two foot. Like, you ever seen Daniel Agar back in the day come with a two foot? He had the biggest shit-eating girl uh, on the planet. Yeah, See, but he looked like a psychopath. <laughs> Yeah, but he had That's a smile. That's the difference. And he had tattoos all over his body. <laughs> he was – he was a – I he would be one of the most – like he'd be one of the players I'd like to play against the least in my life, Daniel Lager. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, Justin, if you take do the honors, give us your prediction lineups. Zach, let us know if you agree or disagree for tomorrow's Union starting eleven. I mean, again, I've always always say goalkeeper can be written in in permanent marker. It's Andre, <laughs> unless unless he's on national team duty. It, it's Andre. It always has been. Always will be. You know, at this point, Andre will be, you know, it's, even when he retires, I'll just keep writing Blake, and then maybe they'll sign another goalie named Blake. So it just kind of keeps go, you know, repeating. He gets uh, his number retired, like, as soon as he retires, right? Like, for sure. Uh, Well, we'll see. I don't know about number. He'll be he'll be a Ring of Honor member for sure. But uh, your back line, going to say the same. I mean, yeah. the biggest thing, and I, I said it before, Olivier and Kai did great jobs of pinning – that three five two into a five three two. Like you pin back those wing backs and made that you you forced them to alter their game plan. And Pineda even admitted he did it too late. They that they really didn't adapt as well as they should have. I think in the midfield, I think the one change is probably going to be you're gonna have Ali back. I think you gave Ali a rest. Or I mean, I don't know if his status, I believe. He should be back. If he is back, I think he's the clear. You put him in on the other side, I think. 
and I, I, I want to hope that I think that Gazdag will keep his spot at the top. And, and I mean, he did a pretty good job. And I think having Jameer come off the bench wouldn't be a bad thing. And then your strikers, I think it's going to be Casper and, and, and Sergio. I mean, Sergio did go 85, which was surprising. But I mean, I think that with a, with a few days rest, I think he'll he'll be right at it. And it's I say with with Union Red Bull games, it's always kind of it's a back and forth, back and forth. And the last time last time I said it and. I remember where I was. I was in I was in West Virginia and I predicted one one right. on the pod. And Matt texts me around midnight and goes, What in the hell? You were right. Like he's like, I got wet for nothing. You were right. And I just said, Man, I'm not usually right about these things. Like <laughs> wow. <laughs> um I, I think I think this is gonna be another draw. Um and I mean, I think one one seems to be the the consensus draw score for Union Red Bulls. So I'm I'm sticking with one one. Even as good as both teams have been playing, and I'm confident in the way the Union have been playing, it's an away game. I know we have more away games in this next last stretch of the season, but still, I'm I, I at Red Bull at this point. I'd rather just go take a draw and come back and focus on on Columbus on Sunday. Very interesting your lineup because of that. I, I see a lot of the starting guys in there. Very interesting. Yeah. Zach, what do you think? Um, lineup wise, I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Jim, though, I think is going to start Montero at the ten because he loves to do that for some strange reason that I will never understand. Um, so I think that's going to happen. Uh, I wouldn't do it myself, but I think Gazdag comes off the bench or doesn't come off the bench, because, again, Jim doesn't like to sub very often. Um, and score-wise, I think um, – I'm going with Justin, but I think it's going to be 2-2, uh, draw 2-2. I, I, I will I will say this, and we didn't talk about this in the Atlantis part of this episode, but Justin and I saw it. When Aronson came in the match, I, that's definitely when the, the goal happened for Casper – but the attack definitely did look a little bit more fluid as well. And I'm I'm just putting that out there to you guys. Definitely just putting that out there to you guys. Um, but I I would like to see so if you're gonna go with uh with with Daniel Gazek as your 10, I would rather see Jamiro start against Columbus. I, I, either or one of those guys have to sit and come off the bench. And I'm not sure if I would start Sergio Santos in this match as well because I think I want him for Columbus, and I would rather have Sergio come out for 30 minutes in against Red Bull if we need him. So who's uh, starting up top then? Quinn or Davo? Uh, you know me. I love or Paxton. <laughs> I, I love me some Quinn. Um, I think he can play that role. I would definitely start him. There. I th- Oh, I mean, honestly, I know Jim's not going to do it. I want to start Davo. But I know he's not going to do that. But – I think there's more of a likelihood that Quinn starts there, and Quinn did sub on as as a as one of the strikers. So I think that's that's what I will see. That's what I would rather see. Uh, one other one other thing I wanted to mention. I want I'm very curious. The matchup that I'm curious to see is Mbizo versus Tolkien because, like I mentioned, Tolkien definitely got the better of Mbizo in that first matchup. And I will say Mbizo has looked better defensively. He's I don't think he'll ever be a polished defensive fullback. I think his game is is creating on the attack, but he's definitely looked better, and I want to see how he bounces back from that one. Matt, to be fair to Baiza, there aren't many defensive fullbacks anymore. Sure. There's like one. <laughs> Kai was good in 2019, and he's kind of like been. He, if he we said we that. we had one. It was Ray Gaddis. That's ah. true. That's true. Now the only now the only one really plays for Man U. Um, Aaron Wan Basaka. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. and that's about all he can do. Um, and as a and as a United fan, as much as I appreciate what Aaron Wan Basaka does, it's absolutely cringeworthy to oh, watch this yeah, guy have yeah. the ball just outside the box, and you just see him like doing stutter steps because he physically can't take anyone on offensively, and just watching him just put in balls that are twenty yards over Cristiano Ronaldo's head is like it's just basically like. You just put your head into a pillow and just scream really, really yeah, loud. Yeah, no, which, I, I, I tend to do that a lot as, yeah. a, as, a, as a fellow United fan. Which is crazy because he played winger for Palace. Like, he was a winger yep. for so long. How are you so bad at one-on-one yeah. attacking? I don't understand. Ugh. 
My goodness. Very good points. Uh, Zach, the person you're thinking of, I think, is Nathan Harrell. Nathan Harrell has been the only young defender I could think of. Matt, your prediction for, for uh, tomorrow before we sign off here? Um, It sounds crazy. It's a midweek game. Uh, so... I, the travel, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not putting the travel really into perspective here. <laughs> right. because, Come yeah. on, right. oh yeah, the right two, at, right at that hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stick the turnpike, turnpike, baby. That, I, there are players. I know for a fact there are players who will be traveling more than an hour and thirty minutes to get to the stadium for that game. So travel means absolutely nothing. Um, honestly, this sounds crazy. I am going to go with a two to one victory for the new york red bull on one oh. premise and, on one premise and one premise alone is the red bull know if they're going to mount any type of playoff run lucky enough every team above us at the current moment we play to finish the season like it's funny enough we play inter we play uh columbus we play city still we still play all these teams that are in the playoff spots above us we play atlanta we play all these guys if the red points away too. If the Red Bull want to go on a run, the city game is a huge boost to confidence. And honestly, I feel that a if the Red Bull are going to go for it, they're going to go for it. Like they're. But the issue I'm going to have with that is, I'm afraid if they push too much, the senior experience that Philadelphia has will beat us up and end up. Philly could easily flip this scoreline, but I'm going to think confident. You know. I'm sipping my that. I'm sipping my Red Bull in a in a teacup. I'm uh, uh, <laughs> uh, pinkies I, uh, out. and pinkies out. I think a two one scrappy victory. I think okay. it's super scrappy. I definitely see retaliation coming from the you know Drew Yearwood body slam that happened just before halftime in the past home game. So uh, I don't know. I think there's going to be fireworks. I know there was fireworks in the game against Atlanta for you guys, and honestly, I feel like. Where this is just another day at paradise for you guys. It, it definitely should. It definitely should. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for hopping back on, my man. Where First off, where can people find you, and where can people find the EPL boys? So if you want to find the EPL boys, it's exactly that tag, at the EPL boys on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, basically, yeah, get your daily uh, English Premier League content. We put out two episodes a week. Uh, we have absolutely ridiculously funny banter. Uh, it's a Liverpool fan and a Man United fan trying to not yell at each other through speakers. So <laughs> trust me, it gets really good and really, really funny. Uh, and then you can always find me um, most places. If you just type in Matt CIA on Twitter, it's Matty because someone has Matt underscore CIA bastard. Yeah. Um, what yeah. A what a horrible person. What, what a horrible person. So yeah, find me on Twitter for daily uh, crying emojis of me being both a United and a Red Bull fan. It's, it's good. Con- it's good content for the neutral provider. So uh, yeah, guys, I can't thank you enough as always. I no, thank you. Man. Uh, I saw, I saw the game creeping up and I'm just sitting here like, do I reach out to them? Do they reach out? <laughs> we, we, we literally talked about it. And I'm like, it was, it was, su- it was Sunday. And I'm like, yeah, wait, when are we recording? I should reach out to Matt. <laughs> I, I, just, with two matches I just got the message and I almost wanted to find the gif of Dr. Evil turning in a chair and been like, I've been expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wrong I love it. <laughs> no, you, you guys are my, you guys, like I said, you guys, and then a shout out, of course, to Jared and Adam. You guys are my favorite hey. Philadelphians on earth. Uh, I love you guys. And I'm love telling you right you now, uh, it, I am absolutely hell bent that, Next year, I will be visiting, whether the Red Bull are playing or not, I am hell-bent to be visiting you guys in as well. Chester. And uh, yeah, I want to have a good time with you guys. So Absolutely, yeah, by man. all means, I am super excited. And the, of course, you guys, if you ever find your way down the up the I-95 and feel like stopping in Harrison for a soccer game, you let me know. I'm your guy. <laughs> if, it wasn't, if it wasn't a midweek game, I think oh. I told you, I was like, I was all, I was coming up. Don't even get me started on this midweek game shit. Matt, I will, I will make a promise to you on September 28th, this episode of Duke by the River. If Columbia does their tour in America again at Red Bull Arena, I will take you with me, my man. That's hey. that's how much I think of you, man. I'm taking Done you deal. to a Columbia match, dude. Done deal. Let's party. <laughs> let's, let's, wait, 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 wait. Can I get can I get involved? Is, 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 let's there, do there, it. Are, Zach, are you want to come? Let's go, man. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm available, I, I, I should be there. 
Oh my god! <laughs> where's where's oh. that agu- agu- aguardiente, man? Come on, yes. we gotta get, we gotta get it back at going. I'm telling you right <laughs> now. Speaking of the Viking army, man, half of those guys they put on an absolute party in the parking lot. So I I'll tell you do. right now, it is going to be an I absolute, absolute fun time. Awesome stuff. The gang uh, takes over the Columbia match. I like that episode. I like mm-hmm. that episode. Uh, Matt, thanks again, uh, guys. Make sure you guys check check him out. Um, of course, guys, make sure if, uh, if you're watching this live on El Parcero Philly's YouTube channel, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, we'll be back at it later this week to preview the Columbus match. We'll give you that date a little later, uh, but we'll be back on PSN for then. So make sure you guys are subscribed there so you can watch it on there. And of course, this episode will be on PSN radio, which can be found anywhere you stream podcasts from Apple, Google, and Spotify. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Matt Sia. Is Zach Boster. That is Justin Guzantier Harvester from Freiburg. And of course, I go by the name of Ed Barcelo Philly, and we're telling you guys to do bong. Talk to you soon.